enumerate the different oxygen delivery systems. Okay, let us first uh, enumerate uh, why is it oxygen is needed you know, for, for patients. So first, uh, it is indicated to patients who have difficulty ventilating all areas of their lungs. No, maybe because the patient has uh, diseases in the lungs. Maybe the patient has um, tumor or you have consolidations inside the lungs. So that's why they have difficulty ventilating no, uh, in all areas of their lungs. Second is whose gas exchange is really impaired. Maybe because brought about by certain diseases. And of course, uh, persons with heart failure. Uh, usually, oxygen therapy is, um, you cannot render you know, oxygen therapy if it is not prescribed by the physician. So, who specifies the concentration? Of course, it is written in the medical order. Uh, the concentration, the method of delivery, and the liter flow per minute. So, what would be the... Um, responsibility of a nurse no, in cases of emergency situation so nurses are allowed or can initiate administration of o2 in emergency situations for example if the nurse does not know no any background of the disease or um, the reason why did the patient came in no, in the emergency room Maybe because of difficulty of breathing or shortness of breath. So readily, the nurse can safely administer auto inhalation at one liter per minute. All right. Next, for COPD patients, or you have your chronic obstructive pulmonary disease client. Okay, for COPD or your chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, this is a progressive lung disease that affects breathing. Now, in giving supplemental O2, removes COPD's patient's hypoxic or low level of oxygen. That's why there is respiratory drive causing hypoventilation, which causes higher carbon dioxide levels. So, if there is a higher co concentration of carbon dioxide in uh, concentration then it would result to apnea and ultimately would result also to respiratory failure the clients has to have a low flow oxygen system is essential oxygen supplied from a cylinder or a wall outlet system is dry so uh, we have to use humidifier now when you say humidify you have to more or less you know, humidify or moisten uh, the air or the oxygen going to the lungs of your patient. Next, what are the safety precautions must be done during ototherapy? Okay, since I have uh, said a while ago, uh, oxygen is odorless, tasteless, colorless, and highly combustible. No? So it's highly combustible because you now with the presence of um, um, fire, you know, it could more or less um, combust. So puputok siya. So to to have it, you no, know, to secure and to have um, a safety environment for the patient, the nurse should place a no smoking sign, you know, when the oxygen is used. And then make sure also that the electrical devices are in good condition or in good order. Alright? So, baka ma electrocute or can cause fire no? with the presence of oxygen tank inside the uh, room of your patient. Now, in San Pedro Hospital, we have certain wards who have wall mounted oxygen. Okay? And um, in other wards, they still use the tank. Alright? So, avoid materials which can generate a static electricity. So, what are these? No? Avoid that could cause static electricity. Okay? So, yung mga sira na um, 
wires no na expose na no wires this can cause no mag short circuit and that can cause again static na electricity and could bring about fire avoid also use of volatile and flammable substances so, wala namang kami talagang ginagamit sa hospital na highly volatile or flammable except for special units no could either be in or okay so, meron doon, no, highly volatile, yung mga ginagamit sa OR, meron. Pwede yung anesthesia, yan, meron doon. Ground electric uh, monitoring devices, no, i-ground dapat natin para po, more or less, hindi tayo ma-electrocute. Pag na-electrocute tayo, so that can cause again accident. Okay, so, again, pag-expose ang wires, yun, no, so that can again cause fire and would lead to combustion of your oxygen tank okay make known the location of fire extinguishers all right so meron po in every department meron naka walmart na fire extinguishers and um no meron meron talaga doon and uh, some staff nurses had underwent no training on um how to how to extinguish the fire. Alright? So, yan. Kailangan talaga natin yan. Okay. So, the next is, we need to know the different types of oxygen delivery system. So, ang dami po, no? Marami tayong oxygen delivery system. One of which is the most common is you have your nasal cannula. Okay? Or, aka, it is also known as your nasal prongs. So, that's why it's nasal prongs kasi... It's an expensive device and it can easily be applied. Okay? Permits some freedom uh, on the part of the patient to move. No? So, yan, madali lang. Madali lang talaga yan siyang ikabit. Okay? Uh, you might be asking as to how many oxygen or the concentration of oxygen can, can this device deliver. So, it delivers a low concentration of oxygen so about 24 to 45 percent lang at 2 to 6 liters per minute so 2 to 6 liters per minute pwede siya makadeliver ng oxygen concentration between 24 to 45 percent all right next oh yan oh easy to apply no, sa patient. So, lagay nyo yung nasal prongs dyan sa dalawang naras ng patient. And then, more or less, you have to place it or coil it at the back of the ears. Wag po eh, sa likod ilagay ito po kasi it's uh, uncomfortable for the patient. So, kailangan po no, nakalagay or nakasabit siya sa tenga at itong ano na ito nasa harap. Alright? So, face mask is another type of oxygen uh, delivery system. So, your face mask, marami siyang klase. So, it covers the patient's nose and, of course, the mouth. Okay? So, dito yung, dito, dito kailangan nakakover ang ilong at saka ang bibig ng pasyente. Alright? So, exhalation ports on the sides of the mask allow exhaled carbon dioxide to escape. Diba? Meron dyan exhalation ports. Itong mga butas na yan. Okay? So, in your simple mask, it can deliver a concentration, an oxygen concentration of 40 to 60 percent at 5 to 8 liters per minute. So, mag-order si doctor na, as you get 5 liters per minute. So, you expect that it will deliver 40 to 60 percent of oxygen. Alright? Another type of your face mask is you have your partial rebreather mask. Okay? So, ito, partial rebreather, it's because meron siyang reservoir bag. Okay, may reservoir bag siya that is attached. Now, allows the client to rebreathe about first, third of the exhaled air in conjunction with oxygen. So, ma-exhaled na yung, ano, no, yung, yung oxygen, thus increasing your fraction of inspired oxygen so you have your fio2 all right so it delivers before i move to fio2 or your fraction 
of inspired O2 or FiO2. Now, your partial rebreather would deliver a oxygen concentration of 60 to 90 percent. Ano naman po ang flow rate? So, ang flow rate, pwede natin siyang 6 to 10 liters per minute. Okay? Ito yung flow rate na i-order ni doktor. Nakuha po. Alright. So, dito, the bag must not totally deflate. So, as you render oxygen here, no, hindi siya totally ma-deflate. Okay? During inspiration. Bakit? Kasi it will avoid carbon dioxide build up. Okay? It will avoid carbon dioxide build up. Okay. Going back to your FiO2, this is your fraction of inspired oxygen. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin nito? No? When you say fraction of inspired oxygen, is the concentration in gas mixture. Now, when you say the gas mixture of room air has a fraction of inspired O2 of 21%. So, meron siyang na-inspire na O2, inspired O2 of 21%. Okay? So, meaning that the concentration of O2 at room temperature is 21%. Okay? So if you can re, uh, if you can um, distinguish this from the next, no? Ang ating partial rebreather mask meron siyang uh, hole dito sa gilid. Okay? 'Di ba? Yung hole na 'yan is what we call your 'di ba? exhalation ports. So these are your exhalation ports. Right. Next. Okay. So when you say, okay. So your non-rebreather, if you have seen the picture, ang non-rebreather po, wala po siyang exhalation ports. Wala yan. Okay? So more or less, it would deliver an oxygen concentration possible 95 to 100%. Pero ang flow rate na is 10 to 15 liters per minute. All right? So, it's a one-way valve on the mast and between the reservoir bag and mast. So, one-way lang siya as the patient inhales and exhales, dyan lang, no? Dito naman, it will prevent the air, room air, to enter. No? Prevent the room air to enter. So, ibig sabihin, talagang in... No? Taas na concentration ng oxygen ang kailangan mapunta sa patients. Okay? So, clients exhaled air from entering the pump. Okay? So, yan. Prevent the room air and clients exhaled air from entering into the bag. So, kasi malakas masyado ang pressure. Okay? So, pag exhale niya, hindi magpasok dito. Instead, ang papasok dito is purely oxygen lang talaga. Alright. Next. Another type of your O2 delivery system is what we call your Venturi mask. Okay. Your Venturi mask delivers a concentration of 24 na baliktad. Okay. 24 20 to 24 percent or 50%. Okay? At a flow rate of flow rate of 4 to 10 liters per minute. So, ito namang Venturi, meron siyang exhalation port isa lang. Okay? Kaya po siya tinawag na Venturi kasi meron siyang jet adapter. Ito. This is the jet adapter. As a wide bore tubing and colored coded jet adapters that correspond to the precise oxygen concentration and liter per minute. Okay? So, for instance, okay, for instance po, sandali po, okay, so for instance, po, ang auto flow rate niya, auto flow rate is 
per liters per minute is 4 liters or 5 liters. So, ang expect mo na FiO2 or yung flow, okay, or your inspired, no, or fractional, fraction of inspired air, pag 4 liters po, it would deliver 36%. When you say 5 liters, it will deliver 40%. Okay? So, maregulate po dyan. So, meron po dyan nakalagay. So, depende yon sa anong kulay. If you wanted this one, so, yan ang ilagay mo. It will only render 31% of the inspired, no? FiO2 or your fraction of inspired oxygen. Okay? So, ganun po yun. Alright? Next. Next is you have your phase 10. Okay, can replace auto mask when the patient are poor, poorly tolerated by the patient, no? So, for example, ang mask, no? Nag-apply ka nung uh, simple mask ba, partial rebreather, or yung, yung non-rebreather, hindi po matolerate nung patient. Then the patient can have this, no? Phase 10, ang tawag doon. This provides varying, varying concentration of oxygen no with an O2 concentration of 30 to 50% pero ang flow rate niya is 4 to 5 liters per minute all right so pwede yan pwede po again depende yan no sa assessment ni nurse at assessment ni doctor if the patient could not tolerate no oxygen mask all right Next is you have your transtracheal oxygen delivery system. So, when you say transtracheal, from the word transtracheal, saan po ang involved? It's the trachea that is involved. Okay? May be used for O2-dependent clients. So, ito na yung hindi mo matanggal-tanggal sa oxygen therapy. So, kailangan na pong magbuta sa trachea. So, O2 is delivered via a small, narrow plastic cannula surgically inserted po through the skin directly into the trachea. So, ganito pa ang itsura niya. No? Maliit lang siya. Meron siyang cannula inside the trachea. And then, pwede. No? Mag-deliver mag na yun. So, may mga patients tayo na ganito na oxygen dependent na talaga. So, a chain around the neck holds, holds po yan, the catheter in place. Okay? So, meron siyang chain dyan. Or sometimes, pwede na rin tali. Okay? Tali po. Okay? That is what you call your transtrachea. Or pwede rin yung um, tracheostomy tube. Okay? Kung tracheostomy tube, ayan, no? Medyo malaki-laki yon ang ipapasok. Malaki-laki ang bore cooling. I mean, malaki ang butas. Okay? Pero, uh, on, pag tinanggal na po itong um, tracheostomy tube, then it can be replaced with transtracheal oxygen na catheter. Alright? So, client requires less oxygen because all of the flow delivered enters the lungs. Okay? So, kaya lang, kailangan natin may bantayan. So, nursing alert. Keep always the catheter patent. Okay? So, how are you going to keep the the tawag nito? Catheter patent. No? So, you can either uh, flush it with 1.5 ml of NSS. So, kailangan mo rin kasi diretso nga yan sa trachea. Diba? So, kung may mga discharges ang patient, pwede din mag-occlude doon sa kanyang catheter. So, you need to no? you need to clean it. So, clean the rod in and out of it. Then, inject. So, meron yan silang ini-insert na rod in. Okay? So, then, inject 1.5 ml of NSS. So, this must be done three, 2 to 3 times a day. Alright? Yan po. So, that's transtracheal. Okay. So, ganit. Ito yung tracheostomy. Okay? Yan. Diba, emergency cases, pwede din ganito, no? magpuncture lang kasi na makahinga ang patient. Either, occluded yung upper airway, airway niya. So, kailangan mo na na magbutas diretso sa trachea. Okay? 
So, eto, pagkatanggal nito, kikipot na po yung butas. So, pwede na siya lagyan ng transtracheal catheter. So, ganito na lang siya. If the patient is oxygen dependent. Alright. Next is you have your oxygen hood. It is a rigid plastic dome that encloses the infant's head. Okay? So, meron siya ganyan. Okay? Meron siyang hood, no? Infant po sa mga bata. So, nilalagay siya dyan. Okay? So, gas should not be allowed to blow directly to the infant's face. Why so? Because uh, when you have to blow it directly into the infant's face or newborn's face, then it would be at risk ng patient nyo for suffocation and the chance to hyperoxygenate also and possible lack of humidity. Okay, hindi pwede, no? Kailangan andito ang, uh, ang oxygen uh, na come out, then i-deliver niya, not directly to the face. Otherwise, uh, ano, ano ang reaction ng bata if directly sa muka, no? So, pag humidified to ha, humidified air. So, medyo mainit. So, when you have this hood, from time to time, you have to check the patient's face. Baka po masyado nang namula, ho, naluto na yung pasyente. Okay? So, if, if ever the patient is too movable, then you can turn the patient from side to side. So, from time to time, you need to check po. Okay? So, again, do not directly allow the gas to blow directly sa face. Otherwise, mag-grasp siya for air, more air. No, wala siyang malumos. Okay. Next is you have your oxygen tank. Okay. By the way, this one is also attached to the tank. Okay. Yung nga lang, uh, para equally ma-distribute siya. Okay. Yan, yung ginagawa. Oxygen food. Kasi, kasi nga po, you cannot apply ox, uh, nasal cannulas no, to them or mask to them. Otherwise, yun na nga, no, they will grasp for more air. So, ganito lang. No, oxygen food lang for infants. Okay? Next is you have your oxygen tent. Oxygen tent is consists of a rectangular, clear, plastic canopy with outlets that connect to an oxygen or compressed air source to a humidifier that moisturizes the air or oxygen. Okay? So, yan siya. Plastic siya actually, no? Um, nakatabon sa patient from the waist up. Okay? Uh, it delivers approximately an, an oxygen concentration of 30%. Okay? So, cover the child with gown or cotton blanket para po, kasi humidified siya, no? Or meron tayong compressed air. Diba? Kung compressed air kasi, cold yan siya. So, again, you cover the child with gown or cotton blanket to prevent against chilling. So, flood the tent. Ano naman po ang kanyang flow rate? Then, you have to flood the tent with 15 liters per minute for about 5 minutes. So, rasan mo po, 15 liters per minute for 5 minutes. And then, i-adjust nyo na po, no? Adjust nyo na po, kung matabi ni doctor, i-retain to 15 liters, then you have to retain it. But, if the doctor would tell you, ang flow rate lang po niya is 10 to 15. Sabihin nga, sige, lower na natin to 10 liters per minute. So, approximately, ito lang talaga ang flow rate niya, 10 to 15. Alright? So, ganito ang itsura. Okay, ganyan po ang itsura niya. So, meron siyang plastic. Okay, so if you can see, meron siya dyang, um, tawag nito, um, oxygen port. Okay, so dyan mag, uh, dyan mag flow ang oxygen sa kanya. Now, for adults, as I've said a while ago, makover lang po ang um, galing sa waist up. Pero for newborns, ayan, napasok po siya sa loob ng tent talaga. For children and adults, I've said, pwede na makover from waist up. Alright? Yun lang. Okay? Okay. I think that ends my lecture on oxygen therapy. So, you need to watch 
the video regarding how to administer oxygen therapy. Thank you! Hi, good day. I'm Algesis Sebastian, your clinical instructor, and I'm going to perform oxygen administration. So, administration of oxygen at concentration greater than that in an ambient air with the intention of treating and preventing the symptoms and manifestation of infection. So, there are three purposes of having this oxygen therapy. First is to correct hypoxemia. Second is to decrease myocardial workload. And third is to decrease the work of breathing. For the equipment, we have the oxygen source, such as your oxygen tank. And also some hospitals would have the wall mount oxygen source. We have also the flow meter with humidifier and also humidifier with sterile water. The oxygen delivery devices such as your nasal cannula, your face mask, and the no smoking sign. We have the monkey wrench, the blue ticket, OS, and also the plaster. First is to determine the need for oxygen treatment by performing respiratory assessment, verifying the order for treatment. So you can perform vital signs and if you have available portable pulse oximeter because this can give us um, respiratory status such as your oxygen saturation. This is also to provide baseline observation and to ensure the most appropriate device is selected to meet the patient's need prior to connecting the oxygen therapy. Afterwards is to do a medical hand washing. This is to deter the spread of microorganisms. Next is to identify and explain the procedure to the client and review safety precaution necessary when oxygen is in use. Hi ma'am, may hapon. Ako din si Aljasa Sebastian. Ay mo ang nurse. So ma'am, um, based sa imong assessment kanina ma'am, medyo babae mong oxygen simula. So kailangan na ito maghatag ng oxygen therapy. So, an explanation would relieve apprehension and it promotes cooperation. The nurse promotes the safety of the client and others by providing pertinent information. So, do not forget also to put the no smoking sign because as we all know, oxygen is combustible. The next is to assist the client to semi Fowler's position if necessary because this would allow free movement of the diaphragm and also it would help in expansion of the lungs. Next is to crack the tongue. This is to remove the accumulated dirt and the oxygen tongue element. Afterwards is to connect the flow meter together with the humidifier with sterile water using a monkey wrench. check for the pressure inside so it's 2000 psi next is to connect the nasal cannula to the oxygen setup with humidifier oxygen forced to a water reservoir is humidified before it is delivered to the client 
thus preventing dehydration of the mucous membrane. Next is to open the flow control valve and check that the oxygen is flowing freely through the tubing and feel the oxygen at the tip of your nasal cannula. And then, like for example, if the doctor ordered for 3 liters per minute, all you have to do is, you can see the ball that is rising, all you have to check is that the lower border of the ball should be at the desired flow rate. Like for example, it's 3 liters per minute. This is to ensure that accurate amount of oxygen is being delivered to the clients. Right after that is to attach this to your client. Apply the curve of the prongs pointing down to the client's nostril. Ma, mag-insert na ko mga. Adjust the loops behind the ears and then down the chin. And move the cinch adjustment to keep the prongs in place. Then instruct your patient to breathe through the nose while the mouth is closed. So mom, ginawal lang ka sa ilong mom, i-close na to ang bakba. Keeping the mouth closed provides optimum delivery of oxygen to the lungs. Next is to use gauze pad at the ear beneath the tubing as necessary. Pads reduce irritation and pressure, thus protecting the skin. But this is just optional. So you can just place it. And then, if the order of the doctor is face mask, all you have to do is just to um, save the same procedure as what we did with our nasal cannula. And all you have to do is to replace it with your face mask. example, the ordered flow rate is 5 liters per minute. You have to check again that the oxygen is flowing freely through the tubings and check and feel for the oxygen at the face mask. Apply the face mask to the bridge of the nose first, then position over the chin Adjusting straps snugly around the head. Next is to assess and chart the client's response to therapy. This is again to determine the effectiveness of oxygen therapy. So ma'am, kumusta na ma'am? Medyo na okay ba nga to ang uh, paginawa compared ganina? Then inspect the equipment on a regular basis. Check the liquor flow rate, the humidifier, and also the safety precaution. So all you have to check also is the, uh, the distilled water and also the flow rate of your oxygen therapy. Afterwards is to do a medical hand washing 
This is to deter the spread of microorganisms. Then, remove the mask and dry the skin every two to three hours if oxygen is running continuously. Do not use powder around the mask. The tight fitting mask and the moisture from condensation can irritate the skin on the face. There is a danger of inhaling the powder if it is placed on the mask. Assess the client's vital signs, color, response to therapy, and monitor equipment on a frequent basis. This is to ensure that the client is not over or under oxygenated and that the equipment is working properly. And lastly, record the type of therapy and the client's response. A written summary provides an accurate documentation of the care and response of the client to treatment. And that is your oxygen administration procedure. Good day everyone. I am My class, any question with our oxygen therapy? Me? There are any questions with regards to the oxygen therapy? Yes, me. May. Yes. Okay, just additional lang no. So in our oxygen therapy, no, we have different colors ng ating mga tang. Okay. So um, especially with the oxygen, no, we have the color. Um, green, no. I um I remember, no, yung mga ano natin, uh, during the licensure exam, no. It was also um asked in the licensure exam that kung ano yung kulay, no, ng um oxygen tank. Okay, so the color for oxygen tank is green. So we have different colors, then, no. When you look at the especially in the OR, no, meron din silang uh, different type of uh, um, colored tanks. Okay, so yung mga carbon dioxide, we have the color green, um, yung nitrous oxide, no, yung blue, and I think yung helium brown, I think, no, and meron din yellow, that means yung mga toxic, no, na mga type of gases. So meron tayong different types of um, mga colored na mga tanks. We have two We have built in already in the San Pedro Hospital ha, in the special ward, special area I mean, like in the DR, the OR, as well in the ICU. We have already the built in oxygen. So we, you cannot see a tank in that areas unless you are in the ward na mag-ikot-ikot ka ng mga tank doon. Okay, so, so nursery, uh, the baby is placed inside the incubator if it is a preterm or if there is uh, some special needs, special care. Naka-incubator ang baby if it needs an oxygen. So ipa ipapasok mo pa rin yung oxygen na tawag noon yung hood kanina na si pinakita sa inyo. No? But if it is uh, already, uh, hindi naman ganun kataas ang need ng baby for an oxygen, so pwede ilagay ang, ang, ang ating uh, incubator is with the, uh, meron siyang butas na maliit, no? So doon na rin ipapasok yung uh, tube ng oxygen para diretso na sa kanyang incubator. Okay? Ralph? May PM si May? Okay, so um, to know if may merong siyang ano, merong ano yan, if to determine if the tank is not empty or not, no, or may, may ano siya. So you have to, ano, you have to open the tank first. No, katong kaganina during the video, meron siyang yung parang 
yung ganun. Yung there is, um, that's the time to uh, na-open na yung tank ninyo. So, meron tayong tinatawag yung flow, uh, yung gauge, no, or yung parang flow meter, kung saan we can um, look at kung puno ba yung tank natin or hindi. Okay? So, I'm not just sure kung ano yung nakalagay doon. No, nakalimutan ko yung nasa flow meter niya kung ano yun. Pero mostly, uh, it should be uh, in the middle. Okay? In the middle yung uh, parang second hand ng, uh, ng flow meter. Okay? Just to know. Pag empty naman, no, it's, it's the same with our ano, parang tanke ng ano, ng ating... Zero. Oo. Ng... Parang gauge lang din ng ating tank ng gas, ng gasoline natin. No? Pag empty siya, so it will be zero. Pag full, nakaan talaga siya. It's either naka half or more than that. Okay? So that's also one thing also that we can take note if padulong na mahimong empty ang ating tank or hindi. Okay? So in the, ano, it's also part of our responsibilities no during in our nursing rounds to look at the tank no kung puno pa ba or is it still able no to produce oxygen or able to supply oxygen to our patient no so if ever no during our um, endorsement no it should also be endorsed if may mga patient kayo na naka oxygen or mga oxygen dependent natin na mga patients okay because as we all know pag naubusan ng ng oxygen and our patient needs an oxygen no? or they are very reliant on oxygen so it will what um magiging kapos yung oxygen sa sa katawan niya and also not just in our body but also in the brain no it, it can cause brain injury sa atin no just 15 minutes could produce um could automatically no magkaka brain um dead no yung patient natin no it's because walang oxygen na nagsisirculate no sa sa blood ni patient so it's really important to know as well no na yung tank natin is puno pa or meron pang oxygen okay with the use of our oxygen gauge flow meter okay so my question ba kayo guys meron akong dagdag uh, yes, ma'am B. Okay, it was mentioned during the discussion by Ma'am Soipo that oxygen is uh, needs doctor's order. So we have to consider this one as medication uh, that needs doctor's order. But in cases of emergency, the nurse can give oxygen to the patient. But you have to remember also that uh, if it saves life, it has also its danger. No? Uh, for the adult, it uh, if it is more than what the doctor or what is needed by the body, it can cause uh, toxicity, oxygen toxicity. For the newborn, if it is more than what is needed by the body of the newborn, it can cause a blindness to the newborn. So kawawa naman ang bata, no? It will cause retrolental fibroplasia, no? Na magiging blind ang baby forever. So before as it was mentioned before uh, during the video no before you start with the oxygenation you have to check the uh, saturation of the patient na meron tayong pulse oximeter yung pulse oximeter man yun no <laughs> yung nilalagay dito sa kamay ng patient if you have seen that one in tv sa mga teleserye di ba nilalagay dito to check for oxygen concentration ng patient so magvary ang ang um, amount of oxygen to be delivered to the patient uh, depending on the saturation level. Uh, so if it is more than that, uh, that is why we have also to, to inform the patient not to self-regulate or the patient as well as the watchers not to self-regulate the oxygen because it has also its danger. Now, as I have said, it can cause toxicity to the adult and it can cause retrolental fibroplasia in the newborn, which will lead to forever blindness. Okay? So, kaya, uh, during the endorsement, it was mentioned by Sir Ralph that when you are going to receive the endorsement, it is also mentioned 
when the patient receives oxygen, you have to take note of how many liters it is being indoors. Now, so that when you do your rounds, you have to check kung ilang liters ang naka-on sa patient. Pag sinabing 2 liters, then you have to check na 2 liters na naka-on kasi sometimes the watchers, no? It, ang notion kasi ng, ng watchers, bilisan natin yung oxygen para makauwi na tayo. Di ba? Kahit sa IV, ganun sila. Paspasina miss B para makauwi na mi. No? But it has its uh, proper regulation. So you have to check also that one. No? With, it was mentioned in the video. I don't know, Ralph. No? Ito yung tanong ko. It was mentioned in the video that when you give oxygen, example, if it is 4 liters, the ball in the flow meter uh, should be, yung, di ba sinabi doon sa video, yung ball niya nasa dulo? No, Ralph? Ah, uh, yes, ma'am. Pero um, di ba dapat nasa line? Ang center? Um, it should be, ano ma'am, uh, kasi ang pag naka-full kasi yun, no, there is a tendency na yung ball niya is will spike at the top and it can burst out yung gauge niya. Yung parang, so dapat talaga when you open the tank, the gauge meter, meter, uh, meter should be uh, closed first no, before um, we open the tank. Okay? So take note guys, dapat naka-close muna yung gauge meter natin sa ating or yung flow meter before we um, open the tank. Kasi it can no, spike yung parang ball niya kung saan we can uh, regulate yung flow ng ating oxygen. And then okay. that's the time na no, pag naka-open na yung tank, that's the time na inahinayan natin siya o regulate. Am I correct? Ang ginamin, ang ginamin ko, Ralph, ba? If it is ordered as 4 liters, the ball should be at the center of the line sa 4. Yes, at the center. Yes, ma'am. Kasi ang, ang sabi kasi doon sa video, baka maano sila ba malito. Ang sabi doon sa video, the ball should be at the level of the... Uh, yeah. Alibawa, 4 liters, ang, ang edge ng ball dapat nasa 4 liters. Di ba dapat nasa center siya? Kung halimbawa, ito yung... Nasa ba? <laughs> Ang ko, ball din ha? Assuming this is a ball. Mabisto gusto ko natin yun. Assuming this is a ball. No? Di ba? Ralph, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If this is the line, kung 4 liters ka, halimbawa, di ba nakas nasa center siya? Ganon. Uh, hindi siya ganon. Tama? Yes, yes. Hindi ba? Sa center talaga. Ang nasa video ha, if you listen carefully, di mention doon ganito dapat kung nasa 4 liters siya. Pero dapat nasa ganyan ha, nasa yes. setro siya ng ball. Ang line, if this is the line going to 4 liters, dapat nasa center ng ball siya. Ha? Okay, murag, daghan, daghan namang ano ana, I, I am uh, pointing out that one because madaming panong minsan ang doktor. No? Ano ba talagang order ko? 4 liters or 4.2? So kasi sa sentro ng ball tayo nag, ano, nag-base. No? Kung halimbawa, 5 liters, ang center ng ball mo nasa 5. Kay ball mo na, murang bulitas na siya na adid to ba? No? Sa, sa kanyang flow meter. Okay, anybody knows what is the other name of the monkey wrench? Boys. Oh, wala'y mekaniko dere. What's the other name for that? Katong ipakita niya na equipments kanina. Monkey wrench. What's the tawag uh, ato kung sa, sa mga panday sa mga ano? Adjustable spanner po, ma'am. Ano yun? Adjustable spanner po. Yes, pwede. Sa Bisaya, unsa? <laughs> Sa tawag na to ana sa tong balay. Social man to imong tawag Mr. Taparan. <laughs> oh, unsa may tawag na to ana sa balay be? Wala engineer diha. <laughs> ha? Wala tigkulikot sa balay diha. 
Ako amam kay ngipon ngipon na mong tower. Ngipon na mo pa. <laughs> Adjustable, di ba? Oh, mga lalaki. Uy. O oh, basig pangita sa guon mo monkey rings ug tuyok mo asa mo monkey rings di. <laughs> na? Mo na mo isugo estudyante sa una dugay kay siya nakakita. Unsa di mo gipangita? Ha? Kung sa Bisaya pa mo na siya adjustable. Aw, oh, unsa na sa balay? Yon ang tawag natin. O, di ba tamo tawag sa balay adjustable scanner, Mr. Taparan? Di ba? O, oh, ayan ha. Sige. Okay. Okay na ako. Any more question? Hayahay na na sa, sa special areas kaya nakabuilt in na tayo. Hindi na tayo magdagandagan, magpatuyok-tuyok sa atong oxygen tank. No? Uh, we have also its technique how to carry the oxygen going to the room of your patient. Ang ato biyang oxygen, usually sa San Pedro Hospital, ang oxygen, uh, oxygen room natin, no? uh, malayo. <laughs> no? Kung ang pasyente mo nasa dulo, tapos dito banda siya ang ating oxygen tank, so iikot mo yan papunta doon sa patient. No? But you have to be in a hurry kasi ang patient is having difficulty of breathing. Naanay technique po pagpatuyok-tuyok. Kahit na maliit ka, no? I am only 4'11, no? pero pwede ko yan siyang iikot. Na hindi ako madaganan, na hindi matumba ang oxygen tank sa sobrang bigat. May technique tayo dyan. Basta mag-nurse ka, mapanday ka, unsa pa, ma-plumber ka, ma-engineer ka, nandiyan na lahat. No? Practice, practice na mo. Dili na ta magpa, pag may, may kailangan ng oxygen tank, sabihan ka na si Aimo, you get an oxygen tank. Ma'am, kada ko ang taon at ito, ma'am, dili. Kaya meron tayong technique dyan. No? Okay na ako, Raph. Thank you. Sige ma'am, um, ipakita na lang nato ang katong pressure gauge para ma uh, ano nila ma'am. Uh, this one guys is your uh, yeah, your pressure gauge no, for your oxygen. So dito naka connect yung oxygen ninyo. Oxygen tank. Okay. Yung sinasabi ko na dapat i-open muna siya kasi naka-close yan eh. Meron siyang parang ano dito. Um, ano to? Yung Valve. parang ba, ano, isa yung tawag na mambi? Valve man to kato yung i-open. Oo. Oh, ayan. Parang naka ganyan. So, i-connect din yun ni siya kani not deray sa inyong oxygen tank kasi meron yan siyang hole dyan. Okay? And then dito naka-close yan siya. So, you have to make sure that this regulating flow Naka-close muna yan siya before you open this one. Okay? Kasi this one will stop no, yung sudden surge ng inyong oxygen. Okay? So to check muna if meron siyang, um, merong, ano to, may laman. Ang inyong oxygen tank is to open this slightly and then wait for the, yung sound na, yung ganun. And then you automatically close it down. And then you connect this regulator natin na tinata, oxygen regulator dito sa ating tank. Okay? So before you, again, before you open the oxygen tank, dapat itong regulating flow is naka-close. Okay? okay? Ano bang mangyayari pag naka-open yan? So the, the ball, yung sinasabi namin kanina, yung ball na nandito, okay? Yung ball na nandito, it will suddenly go up into here that this will burst. No, kasi yung is a metal. Okay? At itong ito is a glass. So imagine if there is a sudden surge of your um, oxygen, no? Talagang sasabo. Okay? So just a precautionary measures para hindi natin madisgrasa yung um, equipment. So we have to make sure na nakaklose muna yung regulating flow. Okay? So, dito guys, when you open this one, so the oxygen will go in here, thus your pressure gauge will determine if my, kung ano nang, ano niya, 
puno ba siya? No? Sometimes goes here 15 or 10 or dito. Okay? And you can determine if yung tank ninyo is gamay na lang if nandito na yung hand niya. Okay? Or dito na lang sa 5 or less than 5. Okay? Ito yung oxygen pressure gauge. Ayan. Oxygen pressure gauge. And then, dito nyo titignan yung sinasabi na namin yung mga B if the order is 4 liters per minute. So, dapat dito, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, your ball should be in here. Sa gitna. Okay, nakuha. Yung sinasabi namin ball. So, that is your 4 liters per minute. Sa flow meter ninyo. And the way you control this one is by the use of your regulating flow. Ito po yung pang control, not this one. Okay? Not this one. Okay? So, dito sa regulating flow. And then, this one is your between muffler. Itong mapantayan ninyo no, sa hospital, mag-bula-bula mag na siya. Out of to, humi to humidify no, the oxygen first before going into the patient. Okay, dito yan lalabas yung oxygen nila. Humidified oxygen. Okay. So, dapat merong tubig po dyan. So, that is a sterile water. Okay. So, meron niyang mga level scale kung saan lang dapat yung tubig ninyo. Okay. Ayan. Any question? Ilum naman. <laughs> Clarifications. Okay, wala na siguro. The, the level of water, the level of water doon sa humidifier, you have to check every now and then. O dapat hindi maglampas doon sa may line na may level na nakalagay doon ng level of water. Nakalagay talaga yan sa, sa container doon. Uh, recommended sa water. Oo, hindi dapat siya mag-exceed mag because that will generate the the flow of the oxygen that will travel into the tube and will get into the lungs. No? Ibis kayo mabuhi siya, masamot siya kamatay. No? So, you have, and you have to check if it is still having a water because, uh, kasi nga, it was mentioned it should be humidified because it can cause, the oxygen is dry and it can cause dryness of the mucosa lining. No? So, dapat humidified siya. Okay? Okay. Then add on lang, no? The water that will be used in the humidifier, no? Katong sa oxygen, it should be distilled water class, ha? Do not use tap water. As you observe, there is a kanaganing filter. Di ba natin filter? Color white. Okay? Kapag tap water in yung ginapuan, ang molik sa tap water is dagko, no? Kasi nga alam mo nga, dili na lagi siya mo, mo babo, uh, mo, mo taas ang ball despite ka ng murag. Naman ka siya yung nagbabos-babos sa kuang um, humidifier. Okay? So, basing na-trap na dito sa imuang filter. That's it. Question? Lana? Lagi sila nag-question. Sorry, ako'y question, be. <laughs> Di mo mag-question? Ako'y question. Ang say spelling sa retrolental fibroplasia, Mr. Taparan. Ma'am? Ang say spelling sa retrolental fibroplasia. 
Pwede, blind glance na lang, ma'am. <laughs> Ay, pero ma'am, naku, question, ma'am, na curious yung kwa ni actually. Uh, question. Ano po, ma'am, ka nang, bali, pwede ba, ma'am, na mauna hurot ang oxygen tapos ang tubig sa humidifier na apa? So, kung mag-refill ka, ma'am, usabon ni mo itong tubig, i-dispose na ni mo itong water for humidifier or same uh, same water lang gihapon siya, ma'am. Kung mahurot ang oxygen? Yes po, ma'am. Tapos, napaipunod ang... Pwede same water. Same water pa rin, ma'am. Oo. Ma Thank you, ma'am. Okay, Mr. Taparan, with the use of branch ni mo, you just remove all the... The humidifier. Moto yung itanggal ka na ang tibuok, no? Moto yung itransfer to another tank. Okay? Apo, ma'am. Apo, ma'am. That's it. That's it. Wala na yung question? Ma'am, among questions lang kay regarding sa practicals. Nami, ano ma'am? Hindi niya na tana. Apo, ma'am. Hindi niya na tana. Excited? Kini silang practical exam. Katupad to silang um, way klase. Saka na kayo nag-PM sa kumam about silang practical exam. May wala na kung nag-PM sa inyo. Basing makarealize mo mga practical exam. Takaroon na week. Okay. Okay, class, we will discuss that later. Nag-PM na sila po sa practical exam, ma'am. Yan na. Ako yung hatag sa practical exam. Nga naman, Mr. Taparan. Ay, ma'am, hindi man, ano, ma'am, nalang may concerns and clarifications po, ma'am. Ang yan na, ang yan na, ang yan na. Sir, we will discuss, okay? We have time there. No? We will give you the, all the guidelines for our practical exam next week. Next week pa, no? So, hindi man ta maka-practical exam kung wala ta na human sa itong topic. So, at this time, we must finish all the topics muna. Then later on, we will discuss our practical exam, okay? Para magkasinabot ta ta na sa practical exam. May pasivista o kay Kwan lang, no? Ang iyang background si Kinsani Moral at Christmas gahapon. 9.9 Okay. Sige. So, yung tanong namin, okay na ba? Ma'am, can we have break muna before our new topic? Break sa. Okay. Break lang muna. Sige. So, what time ka balik daw, ma'am, sir? 20 minutes break. Ang sabaral. Sige, go na. Sana 4.50 na lang, ma'am. Balik. Okay, sige. Okay. No third. Saba pangit.
Everybody's in. Can you open your cam? Turn on your camera, please. Is it not enemy? Okay, we have another topic, no? I will play the pre-recorded. Kindly you get your um, ball pen and a uh, notebook, no, to jot down the important things. Velasco, are you in? Gemau, Mangingin. Ramos, Taparan, Praspe, Lapa. Nasaan ka, Miss Concha? Sa bahay po. Sa bahay po, ma'am. Sa bahay? Apo. Ba't ka naka-face mask? Miss Kiko, kasi ako lang ako nag-mask. Sir Saba, are you in? Ang Pusaga. Open cam, please, if you're in. Kung wala nag-open, wala pa na naabot. O pakabalik. Wa pa gilid ni. O pa gilid siya. Pusaga o si Sir Saba. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Mrs. Anna Socorro Suipo, and I am a clinical instructor. Today, I will be discussing death and dying, or the post-mortem care. Here are my learning objectives. At the end of the lecture, students will be able to discuss what death and dying means, distinguish stages of dying, enumerate body systems, signs of imminent death, and define the term death, and describes the development of concept of death. And lastly, cite the stages of physiologic changes. All right, let us start uh, by defining what is death and dying. Okay. So, dying process is often accompanied by a myriad psychological, spiritual, and physical needs. No? And nurses are in the ideal position to identify and address them. When you say myriad of a cluster of uh, psychological, physical, and, and spiritual needs. So, never leave your patient um, in case your patient is dying. So, we need to address no, their needs. Uh, kasi yun lang talaga ang pwede natin maibigay support. Alright? So, address whatever needs your patient uh, have. No? So, address them. Next. Alright, so the next topic would be um, cobbler raw stages of dying. Alright, so we have uh, uh, Dr. Elizabeth Cobbler Ross. No? She was the author of the most commonly taught system for understanding the process of dying in her 1969 book entitled On Death and Dying. So she was able to come up with five stages with the mnemonics of Dabda. So you have there. Uh, the first stage is denial. So usually patients would ask this question, this can't be true, okay? Usually this is, uh, or sometimes they would ask you, uh, I'll be just fine after surgery, all right? So uh, it's not ready to deal with pra practical uh, problems, no? So denial is a common defense mechanism used to protect oneself from hardship of considering an upsetting reality. 
The author also noted that patients would often reject the reality of new information about the initial shock receiving a terminal diagnosis. So what are manifestations of the patient? Sometimes patient may directly deny the diagnosis attribute um, to faulty test no? or uh, unqualified physician. So sabihin nila agad na mali. Hindi yan. Baka mali lang yung uh, result. Okay? Baka hindi magaling yung doctor. Yan. And may assume artificial cheerfulness. Sometimes they would. No? Tawa-tawa lang yan sila but deep inside them. Meron. No? Uh, sometimes uh, they would also avoid the topic in conversation. As much as possible, they will not no, talk about the diagnosis. Alright? So, the second uh, the second stage is you have your anger. So, it's commonly experienced and expressed by patients as they can see the reality of terminal illness. Illness. Sorry for nangungo ako kasi I'm not feeling so well. But anyway, okay, so, they sometimes ask this question, why me? No? Bakit ako? Bakit ako may ganitong sakit? Marami naman sana dyang loko-loko, bakit ako? Alright? Client and family have feeling of resentment, envy, and anger directed at client, family, health provider, God, and others. Okay? So, it was, it was uh, stated, that one of the manifestation is anger. Anger may be directed no, uh, as with blame of medical providers for inadequately pre preventing the illness or the disease. So, bakit hindi nyo kaagad ginawa ang, ng paraan para ma-prevent no, ito? A uh, patient would die of such disease. Then, family members also will be contributing to risk or not being sufficiently supported or supportive rather so anger manifests a short temper uh, or loss of patience yan no so madali lang sila madali lang silang magalit yan all right so the next the third stage is have the bargaining Okay, ito naman usually ang nire-raise nila na question. I just want to see my daughter's situation. Then I'll be ready. No? Nagka-bargain na sila. Yung mga ganun. Lord, i-extend mo naman ang life ko. No? One year. Para makita ko lang talaga ang anak ko mag -ready. Okay? So, yan siya, no? Maraming binabargain. Okay, six to bargain to avoid loss. Yan. Yan yung mga manifestation. Client or family asked for more time to reach an important life event and make promises to God and others. So Lord, pagbigyan mo lang talaga ako. Extend my life. No, parang ganun. And I'll do good para lang ma-extend ng kanyang life. So here, um, uh, there is a, a, another manifestation in the part of the patient is there is active participation na from the patient. Okay, sige, gamutin nyo na ako. Oh, kasi gusto ko nang umuwi. Kasi nakipag-bargain na siya. Okay? Okay, the fourth stage is you have depression. Okay? This is the most immediately understandable of Dr. Elizabeth Cobbler Ross stages. Bakit? Kaya. So, ito usually ang um, tinatanong no? or sinasabi ng patient. I just don't know how my wife gets along after I'm gone. Yeah, nag-worry. Um, I share ko lang doon. When my father died, uh, before siya namatay, dying na kasi siya because of cancer. Uh, he said, I cannot let go because nagawari siya for my mom. Kaya ba kaya namin? Alagaan ng nanay namin. No? So, yun. Alright? 
so grieves over what has happened and what cannot be. Okay? So dito, mag-manifest po sila ng sadness, no? fatigue, luya, kana, kasi na-depress. They sometimes um, mututok na lang sa wall. No? Nag-iisip. Yan. Bantayan niya yan. Kausapin niya yung pasyente. If that happens. Okay? So, the last stage here is we have acceptance. Okay? In acceptance, ito naman usually ang sinasabi, I have no regrets. I've done everything. I wanted, I wanted to in my life and I'm proud of what I have accomplished. Yes. No? Kahit na sila dying, nag-worry pa rin sa family members. So, kung mamatay man ako, alagaan mo ang nanay mo, alagaan mo ang kapatid mo, paaralin mo mga pamangkin mo, these are things, no? Na usually they would um, utter. Okay? So, here, um, patient recognizing reality of difficult diagnosis while no longer protesting. Are struggling against. Okay? So, nadawat na nila. So, comes in terms with loss, yung mga may have decreased interest in surrounding and support persons. Okay? May wish to begin making plans. So, ito, ano, yung sa stage na pumamatay ako, uh, ganito ang gawin nyo, ha? Ganito, ganyan. Nakahanay na siya. So, ibig sabihin, lahat ng properties, no? Saan siya ihaya? Sino magasto? So, parte yan siya sa public ng plan. Okay? Ito yung medyo dying in a long, ano ha? Pero yung sabi mo, sudden, sudden ang type ng disease, na baril ba siya? Siyempre, hindi niya na talaga magawa yan. Pero in the process of dying, eto pwede niya pa. So, they, they, they tend to spend more time with the family. No? Kasi they're trying to build memories habang andito pa sila sa, sa mundo. No? So they would love to die sa kanilang lugar, sa kanilang mga bahay, kung saan nila gusto. While spending it with the family. Okay? So my father died actually at home. Inantay niya talaga kami na magdating yan lahat. Okay? So yun, yun, no? So, Alam na namin that, that he is dying. And we have accepted it. Kasi ayaw ko rin, kasi cancer nga, late stage. No? Ayaw ko rin siya i the hospital. The same thing. Okay? He will be intubated, he will be revived, but the pain is there. Hindi ko naman sinasabi na wala kaming ginawa. Okay? But my father already have stated na okay lang sa kanya na mamatay peaceful okay so yun po yun okay so what are body systems indicators of eminent death okay eminent death okay <clears throat> so pagdating po sa cognition and orientation ito yung mga indicators or manifestation may be agitated or restless and cannot subjectively respond to verbal stimuli. Okay? Sa so cardiovascular naman, so ayun na yun, no? Tachycardia, irregular heart rate, yan. Low blood pressure, a significantly, a significant widening between systolic and diastolic pressure. So, masyado ng wide ang difference. So, for example, 200 over 8. 200 over 60. Yan, no? So, ano ang difference sa 200 against 60? 140. Okay? Then, you also have dehydration. No? These are manifestations. Okay, how about sa pulmonary system? Pulmonary system, of course, meron mang tachycardia, nagbilis ang heart niya. No? The, the lungs would also compensate. So, there would be tachypnea. Sometimes, difficulty of breathing. And yes, it does happen. No? Merong acetone breath. Okay? 
my kind stoke breathing alam ko alam niyo na itong different breathing no na discuss na ito sa HA okay pulling of secretion or noisy respiration so ayun na marinig mo na wala na siyang naghahagok kasi nagapul na ang secretions towards the lungs okay yan then sa gastrointestinal system naman Siyempre, wala na silang gana magkain. Kasi nga, may tachycardia na. Hirap na rin sila maghinga. So, hindi na rin sila kakain. No? Parang, inahabol na ang hininga. So, diminish ang appetite. Okay? Smaller amount of feces. It's because diminish na ang appetite. 